Max Barbacow's spin on the classic time loop film Palm Springs came out during a curious time. After premiering at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2020 to rave reviews and being scooped up by Hulu and Neon for a staggering $22 million, it officially debuted on the Disney-owned platform in early July. As you may recall, this was at the beginning stages of a worldwide COVID-19 pandemic that forced the world into a mass lockdown. The parallels between the movie and real life quickly gained an eerie resemblance as many felt that they were indeed reliving the same day over and over again. Some had trouble being faced with this truth, while others felt validated, vindicated even, by the film's events. By all metrics, Palm Springs hit the cultural zeitgeist and became an international success. Two plus years later, it's worth revisiting the film's many merits, in particular what it can teach us about the meaning of life. Life has this sneaky way of throwing the same problems at us, over and over again. Either we deal with them and take that opportunity to evolve, to acknowledge that we'll always be imperfect beings that can only grow through change, or the challenges will keep coming back, and stronger every time. There's a particularly powerful scene in Richard Linklater's Boyhood that illustrates this very issue. In it, Patricia Arquette breaks down in the kitchen while talking to her son, acknowledging that she yet again followed the same pattern, feeling stuck in another loveless marriage with another alcoholic. You know what's next, huh? It's my fucking funeral! The trick though, or the deeper truth, is that it's never too late. We're all on different timelines, doing things at our own pace, and life is right there for the taking once there's an acceptance of what is, rather than continuing to swim against the current. And it's the philosophy of acceptance that permeates throughout Palm Springs, a film very much intertwined with Albert Camus' The Myth of Sisyphus. According to Greek mythology, Sisyphus was punished for all eternity to roll a rock up a mountain, only to have it roll back down to the bottom when he reached the top. Camus, who claimed that there is a fundamental conflict between what we want from the universe and what we find in the universe, views Sisyphus as the ideal absurd hero and that his punishment is representative of the human condition. As long as he accepts that there is nothing more to life than his absurd struggle, then he can find meaning and happiness in it. That's a circumstance our heroes, Niles and Sarah, find themselves in, taking the form of a time loop condemned to repeat the same day for eternity. They inevitably go through many life is meaningless stages, and when faced with total nihilism, quickly discover, as Camus also suggests, that suicide is not the answer. Living with the absurd is a matter of facing the fundamental contradiction of what the universe is and what we want it to be, and maintaining a constant awareness of that fact, facing the absurd which Camus indicated having three main features, revolt, freedom, and passion, allows us to live life to its fullest. For our heroes in Palm Springs, that requires first and foremost acceptance, something Niles has already done, but Sarah is still working through. Pain is real. Why can't you understand that? It doesn't matter. Nothing matters, right? Those are your words. No, pain matters. What we do to other people matters. What they eventually realize, however, is that accepting doesn't mean a lack of action, simply an acknowledgement of what the situation actually is. Change can be scary. It often is. Yet in the end, all that matters is the present moment. Cliché as that may be, there is no future and there is no past. They may inform the present, but they don't have to decide it. J.K. Simmons' character Roy perfectly encapsulates that sentiment when, after countless days and months and years of exacting revenge on Niles, he finally accepts that he can't escape his repetitious fate. He'll never be perfect, he'll never be what he hoped for, but in many ways, Roy's found it's actually better. He once described his marriage as a bottomless pit of sorrow, but he now finds it in great joy and appreciation. What happened to marriage being a bottomless pit of sorrow? Things change, you know. Priorities change. And the beauty of it all, which is perfectly exemplified by the scene in which he has a grounded tete-a-tete -tete with Niles, is that we're always learning from each other. The boulder, the one that goes up and down the hill, isn't just ours. The experience is collective and the possibilities to acquire knowledge are endless. Ultimately, as Palm Springs so expertly shows, life is completely unpredictable and out of our control. Clinging to this idea that things can be in fact controlled is but an illusion that keeps us from growing and evolving. So when things happen as they so strangely happen to Niles and Sarah, we should let them happen in full. 
because that's the only thing no one can take from us. Our ability to choose how to react to the uncontrollability of life. There's an argument to be made, however, that the film's final third, and in particular the ending, deviate from Camus' absurdist views, veering more into self-empowerment through acknowledgement of toxic traits, as well as the enduring power of love. Both Niles and Sarah complete their arcs by facing the issues that are keeping them stuck in time and learning from them. Once that level of knowledge is achieved, they're ready to move on, meaning they're ready to come out of the time loop and face a whole new set of challenges.